focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Gems and jewelry sector has witnessed changes in consumer preferences in recent years. With increase in per capita income, consumers are demanding new designs and varieties in jewelry and branded jewelers are catering to these changing demands. This growth of the gems and jewelry industry was celebrated by the Gem and Jewelry Export Promotion Council at the first ever India Gold and Jewelry Summit in New Delhi. One of the key discussions at the summit was a focus on gold policy that included opening addresses by Praveen Shankar Pandya, Chairman of GJEPC, and Aram Shishmanian, CEO of the World Gold Council. Sir, I am here on behalf of an industry who has done excellent job for last 50-60 years but has not got its due from the government and the perception it has created in the mind of the government officers here. See, in the world we are regarded as leaders in diamonds, in jewelry, in colored gemstones, but in India we still have some, uh, you know, perception which goes against us. So all the people, they are not highly educated, but they are very entrepreneurial and they go forward and do things. And especially in gold and jewelry sector. Sir, we have been since 1995 constantly increasing our exports, becoming more transparent in the domestic industry and this is a journey which we have embarked upon. Unfortunately, the infrastructure that we had in 1995 and before that centuries old, which are, you know, located near different Javeri Bajars around the country, are now all dilapidated. We need a strong infrastructure, something like jewelry parks, which is one stop shop for all the 22 permissions that are required for opening a factory. Supplies of gold, customs, all those things inside that jewelry park, and for which I have also spoken to Commerce Ministry. And apart from that, various other uh, supply problems of metals and other things that can be taken care of. Gold is intrinsic to India's social and economy. Uh, you know it a million times better than I because it runs in your veins. It absolutely can be the vehicle for supporting economic growth, for generating employment, for protecting households and providing them financial security, and for consumers to provide them confidence in the product that they buy, to be a valuable mainstream asset for the nation, particularly as the economy now is on the point of uh, rapid growth. The case for a broad-based policy framework uh, has never been stronger. The framework necessary is to help guide both policymakers, government, and the industry over the coming months, years, and maybe decades uh, to bring about the necessary reforms in the country. Uh, we see that there are really four pillars of reform that need to be put in place, four levels of capability. Consumer protection at the very heart, creating organized markets, both trading and logistics, ensuring households can continue to deploy gold for financial security, and of course, making India in, in enabling greater employment and economic growth. All of these can be addressed by implementing standards, infrastructure, integrating the industry into the mainstream of Indian finance and commerce, 
and of course the Make in India initiative. The session covered a large gamut of policy issues and even featured industry counterparts from Turkey to share and discuss their experiences of policy development in their country. Emre Koker, head of department domestic debt management at Turkish Treasury Istanbul, spoke about Turkey's journey towards a healthy jewelry market. In India, gold is an important place in our economy. It is not a traditional investment, but also it's our, on our daily life. For example, we give gold as present in our uh, ceremonies, wedding ceremonies, or on a new baby celebration ceremonies. But the problem is that the holders of gold, the investors, are holding this gold out of financial system. So as a policymaker, as Turkish Treasury, we created two new instruments to bring this idle gold into the financial system. In the beginning of the project, we have selected our target investor base and we choose the retail investors. So only retail investors can invest to these two new instruments. After selecting the investor target, we also analyze the demand and the needs of the investors. So by making this analysis, we created two new instruments. One of them is a conventional bond, which pays interest. The second one is Sukuk, which pays rent income to the investors. Because some of the investors in Turkey do not want to receive interest for religious purposes. For this reason, we created two new instruments. And by taking into account their needs, we created these instruments in such a way that at the end of the investment period, the investors can receive the physical gold at the end of the maturity. In the third step, we find out an intermediary institution to be able to reach the investors. So we selected a public bank as an intermediary institution to be able to reach the investors easily because this public bank has lots of branches all over the country. And finally, of course, the incentives are important. The return rate and the tax, ex tax advantage are the main incentives of this security for the Turkish people. Thank you very much. The demand for jewellery is expected to be significantly supported by the recent positive developments in the industry and policies introduced by the government. Finance Secretary Hasmo Kadia not only gave the government's perspective on gold policy, but also answered questions related to gold policy issues in a one-on-one -on -one session with CNBC TV 18's Executive Editor Lata Venkatesh. We are conscious of the fact that jewellery industry is an industry of great importance to the country from the viewpoint of job creation. So the policy neglect that Praveen Shankar Pandya has talked about cannot remain. There is no question of government neglecting this industry. We are conscious that this is an industry which can create a lot of employment for people and that's why if the industry feels that there is some amount of policy neglect, we will try and remove it. My second point is that as on today, the jewellery industry, gold and jewellery industry is more for domestic use. India is the largest consumer of gold, one of the largest and uh, also we have a preference for buying more and more jewellery and also storing a lot of gold. But we must, as the council has also outlined, we must set targets for making gem and jewellery industry an export-oriented industry. And our export at one time should become more than the domestic demand. This should be the goal and I'm sure the council has also, Premier Bhai talked about a goal of 25 billion US dollar, right? By 2025. So we can all achieve this goal and we are with you. We will try and uh, help you in this. The industry's big demand 
is the reduction of import duty. Now, I was making a, a rough calculation. It's about $3 billion a month that is imported in the form of gold. So that's about $35 billion a year, 2.2 uh, lakh crore. 10% is 22,000 crore. Are you willing to give up that and make it 11,000 crore? Is that the only hurdle? No. One fact is that the import of gold also keeps fluctuating from year to year. Uh, sometimes it is 1,100 tons, sometimes it is 800 tons, sometimes it is 600 tons. So it depends on how you calculate. But our rough estimate is that it's a loss of 25,000 crore per annum. Yes. The entire uh, uh, gold duty comes to around 25,000 crore. For an yes. We'll see. I, as I mentioned, it is a big dent, but Praveen Bhai's point of view that probably if you reduce the rate, uh, there might be better compliance also. But that better compliance will not exactly be 50% more, probably. <laughs> okay. I mean, or 100% more. <laughs> so we'll have to see. The calculations but, uh, export, are. Export will increase. Yeah, that's true. Uh, no, exports, employment, everything. But employment, uh, no, the. Uh, Dissonance is that you were willing to see the justice when it came to GST, when it came to the domestic tax. If that is 3%, the gap is very wide between the custom duty and the GST. You understood that, I mean, you appreciated that uh, domestically the loss of revenue and, uh, you know, the cash transactions in gold will increase if the GST is increased. Why not extend the argument to imports and exports? No, the problem is that gold is imported not only for making jewelry the gold is also imported for storing in form of biscuits so that's a problem but anyway we will uh, sort of look at this uh, decision in its entirety and i do agree with you that since we have treated the gold uh, jewelry industry separately in the gst structure also there is a reason to okay. because it's an employment uh, generating industry so, uh, should one expect a decision sometime soon? Is it on the table? Is it something uh, as close as the budget or uh, is it a distance away? This is the problem with media people. They want to know the exact... <laughs> no, approximate. Approximate. <laughs> can't say. Can't say. Okay. Well, the uh, other... You can't make me commit saying, you know, something will come in the budget or something will come before the budget or something will come three months after the budget. That is something I cannot commit, you know. No, I perfectly understand. Uh, I don't know if the axe has already fallen in terms of time bar on budget. I didn't want you to violate that uh, time bar at all. I think that comes in December, so you still... They already started. Okay. All right. So long as it's a commitment and an understanding, I guess the industry has something to look forward. So the other uh, uh, request which the industry repeatedly has is that gold is nobody's baby and everyone's baby. Uh, it's to some extent, as you said, the Commerce Ministry's uh, key uh, area of focus. But uh, the duty obviously falls on uh, uh, Finance Ministry. And uh, often RBI is an interested party because it is interested in keeping the current account deficit down. And it is always perceived that you can't do much about oil imports, or you don't want to do anything about engineering imports. And so the act normally falls on gold. Uh, if current account deficit is wide, uh, then you know gold's, gold is seen as the problem. The point I'm making is that there are many people who are making policy who are interested parties so the industry's request is that you have a gold board or a gold ministry or all decisions of gold are taken in one ministry. Uh, is that something that the government is considering? No, actually there are multiple uh, regulators who are involved in the yes. gold jewelry industry. I agree with you. Uh, but we have never tried to restrict the import of gold because current account deficit is not a big problem for us now. No. It is not. So that's something which we have not done. Uh, Yes, the demand for creating a separate policy body which takes all the important decisions about gold is a welcome uh, suggestion and I don't know, it must be for the Commerce Ministry to initiate the discussion on that. Well, uh, one of the requests also is that it, there should be a spot exchange for gold because you never know as you, when you buy from a family jeweler or uh, unbranded uh, jewelers whether you're buying the right uh, uh, standard of gold. So, uh, I mean, spot exchange again will fall in your ministry. That was another request, therefore, that one gold board uh, or something be created. Is that, uh, again, uh, is there a time, time for that? I mean, that's not linked to the budget. Yeah, actually, you know, the decision about uh, uh, the infrastructure for the gold and jewelry industry 
the decision about uh, uh, regulatory issues of gold standards etc the decisions about uh, the availability of a spot exchange or commodity exchange for uh, transparent dealings of gold now these are all decisions which can be uh, combined into a single uh, multi regulatory body you know in which uh, the representatives of all the regulators are there mm -hmm. okay fine so the other uh, request that came is uh, the merchandise uh, uh, export uh, uh, from india scheme meis is there any uh, 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 you know thinking to extend that as well to gold well my view is that uh, the incentive of meis number 1 is something which may not last longer because of wto uh, provisions you know it is something which we are carrying on for some time but i think probably we will have to uh, put a full stop to it after some time okay and i think so you know but uh, the question is that uh, can the industry or the businesses remain competitive only out of the government subsidy this is a question you have to ask and i think the industry should ask for a model of competition in which they are inherently competitive rather than depending on government subsidy for remaining competitive so that that should be our model okay. well those were the preliminary questions if you can hold on for a little bit more i'm sure the audience has questions so this my name is jindal from assocham sir uh in the industry we feel that 25000 tons of household gold and the gold which is in the country if it is brought to the mainstream if it is connected to the mainstream of business main economy then it will strengthen the economy it will grow the economy at the same time it will bring lot of uh, jobs to the economy what is your take on this sir? Is, can this be a ready solution for a good uh, and fast solution for uh, strengthening the economy well nobody in this hall will disagree with what you are saying it is definitely something which is desirable the question is how do you bring the idle gold into the uh, into investment you know so there was a gms scheme gold monetization scheme which has been tried by dea but i don't know what is the what is the extent of success we have got in this 6.5 tons uh, yeah. in the last answer given in the lok sabha so that's that's not much i think we need to so the desirability of what you are saying is very much established the question is can you suggest some instruments for it this is the question so we can put a study group on this and we can tweak the gms to desired uh, thing yeah. so that it can work well but again that you can't tell me that in order to make gms please uh, waive all the taxes do this no no we are not we asking for that sir. Any... no no we are not asking yeah, for that sir. but we are we we'll look at it you know thank you sir uh, sir this is nitin khandel all from gjf sir questions ye hai ki jab hum electronics payment ko kafi badhava de rahe hai uh, पंड्या जी ने काफी सारे सजेशन दिए हैं और काफी बार हम आपसे भी मिले हैं सर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स पेमेंट के ऊपर इंसेंटिवाइज हम कितना जल्दी कर सकते हैं जिससे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स पेमेंट इस इंडस्ट्री में इंट्रोड्यूस हो सके सर दूसरा बैंक का जो प्रवीण जी ने कहा था कि रिक्स रेशो बहुत हाई करके रखा है ज्वेलरी इंडस्ट्री को एक अलग नजर से देखा जा रहा है और केस काफी पेंडिंग रहते हैं और जो ये भी देते हैं रैंकिंग वो भी बहुत लो होती है और मोनेटाइजेशन के अंदर सर सबसे बड़ा जो है एक यूआरडी परचेस के अंदर एक प्रॉब्लम काफी आता है काफी ये जो सोशल सिक्योरिटी के लिए लोग गोल्ड बाय करते हैं और जब 50 ग्राम गोल्ड किसी अर्जेंसी की वजह से फ्राइडे या सैटरडे को आते हैं और दस हजार का जो लिमिट है उनको रीपेमेंट करने का वो बहुत छोटा होता है तो उसमें जो रियल सिक्योरिटी के लगता मेडिकल इमरजेंसी आती है ट्रेवलिंग इमरजेंसी आती है काफी इमरजेंसी होती है वो बहुत दिक्कत होती है और वो अच्छे प्लेयर को बुक्स के अंदर रखने में काफी दिक्कत जाती है तो नेक्स्ट डोर पे कस्टमर चला जाता है तो इस पर थोड़ा बजट में ध्यान दिया जाए थैंक यू ओके विल कीप इट इन टू माइंड इज देर एनी इंसेंटिव फॉर मॉनिट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक पेमेंट्स नॉट जस्ट फॉर द गोल्ड इंडस्ट्री बट जेनरली फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक पेमेंट ओवर कैश आई एम नॉट टू श्योर विद एन स्पेसिफिक इंसेंटिव एज ऑफ नाउ बट इज डिमांड फॉर इट there is a demand for it and uh, there are two ways of encouraging uh, digital payment one is to discourage the cash payment that's true so the disincentives for cash payment 
and the other one is to actually give positive encouragement for digital payments. So these are both the ends which you can address. I, on behalf of GJPC, extend your sincere thanks to participate and share your views on the policy. Sir, we have noted your suggestions and observations, and we hope all these points will be a vital input in formulating the new coal policy for the country. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.